Welcome, everybody, to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Mar Diege, coming to you guys today on April the 9th with another round of topics and stories to talk about on today's episode. I'm going to start off with the Pittsburgh Steelers, why they sit in a very favorable spot to potentially trade back and why a lot of teams are going to be after their number 20th overall pick in this year's draft. Then I'm going to be going more into my top five players, coaches, or teams under the most pressure to perform this coming season or else. Later on in the show, I'm going to be talking about the Rams and them having a first round pick for the first time since 2016 what the outlook for them looks like around the 19th overall pick, whether they should trade it, keep it, draft somebody. It's all going to be talked about later on. Then at the end of the show, I'm going to talk about CeeDee Lamb and his contract situation right now with the Dallas Cowboys entering in that final year, how that all plays out into their plans long term and in 2024. All that will be discussed on today's episode. Make sure to drop a follow, a like, and subscribe to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. And before I start with the first segment, I want to remind you guys, if you have any questions, comments that you want to make during the live show, use the tip and donations link you see on your screen right now, gsmcpodcast.net, with any of your questions or comments. Using that link makes it easier for me. I can see your question pop up in my chat box. I can read your question on air, then have more of a conversation, make it more engaging. It's a lot better in my opinion, and it's a big help for this show if you guys are able to use that link. Once again, the link to the Tim and Donations is gsmcpodcast.net. Big thank you to you guys if you guys are able to use that during today's live episode. But... Like I mentioned before, going and starting in the city of Pittsburgh, they have the 20th overall selection in this year's draft. Their biggest needs, even though they've addressed a good amount of them in free agency, there's still some glaring needs at offensive tackle, at center, wide receiver, and defensive back. Just to recap some of the moves that the Steelers have made, they've brought in Patrick Queen, they traded away Deontay Johnson, but have tried to replace a little bit of that loss with Van uh, Van Jefferson. They brought in Qu- Quez Watkins. That was on the offensive side. On the defensive side, like I mentioned, Patrick Queen and Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, taking all the headlines, really, for the Steelers offseason. But, like I mentioned before, offensive line still remains one of the biggest things for them. And that's where I wanted to start this conversation. Yesterday, I mentioned the Packers the Commanders, the Eagles, as some of the teams looking to trade up with the Seahawks specifically to try and acquire some of these offensive linemen, defensive backs, that are all starting to go around the mid-teens, the 10s to 20s, in that in that range right there between those picks, starting from the Jets and ending with the Steelers. The Steelers find themselves in an interesting spot, I think, because they already have a good amount of picks, and I mentioned those four positions as their biggest needs. Looking at the teams that I talked about yesterday with the Packers, Commanders, and Eagles, trading up to 16 would obviously cost a little bit more because you're moving up a bit further up. And to be honest, looking at where the Seahawks are, even then at 16, I think it's still a bit too late to draft some of the premier offensive linemen or some of the premier defensive backs that really all these teams need. Um, In all honesty, the Steelers, Seahawks, Packers, Eagles, Commanders, they all need around the same um, needs on their defensive side of the ball and offensive side of the ball. If they want to really secure themselves a pick, that being all the other teams after the Steelers, I think trading up into the 13s, the 12s, Anything before 15, I think, would be very beneficial. But again, it's going to cost you more. That's why I get into this whole topic of the Steelers. Because at 20, you have some areas where you have players or some teams behind the Steelers. Like, particularly the Bills, the biggest one that I'm just thinking of off the top of my head. 
a team that's desperate for offensive talent. Yeah, they could get some at 28, which is where they, they sit right now for digs. But their general manager is known for making moves up. Brandon Bean has actually moved up in the first round four times in the last six years. So that's a team that really entices and really intrigues someone like the Steelers to try and trade back. Because at 20, offensive tackle, not really going to be there. At wide receiver, all the best ones are going to go most likely in the top 10. And then at 20, I think it's still pretty early to draft that next group of guys for the value that that pick holds. Defensive back as well. If you're not getting Terry on Arnold or Quinion Mitchell, in my opinion, I think 20, again, is a bit too early for any of those other guys that fall in line right behind those two. I think Mitchell and Arnold are the consensus one or two. Whether you have Arnold one or Arnold at two, that's up to all these teams that make their boards and have the order set, heading closer and closer to the draft. So again, at 20, I think it's still too early to move into the next group of guys. And at center, I talked about it a little bit with the Eagles as well because they moved on from Jason Kelsey and the Steelers moved on from their previous center, Mason Cole, who was released in the offseason. 20, again, if you're looking at Zach Frazier, at potentially Graham Barton from Duke, as well as Jackson Powers Johnson, Field Yates, Mel Kuyper have all been on the same page saying that these centers are starting to move back a little bit. Their value hasn't decreased, but I think most teams realize that the field around them isn't in a dire need for centers. So moving them back, having them shift back a little bit in the first round, potentially now into the second round, would make more sense to me as if I was drafting for the Steelers to just wait on the centers. Unless you want the absolute best one, at 20 it's still early. I don't even think the Eagles would take Graham Barton at 22 if they could and, he would, and if he was still there. So all these things have, are just screaming for the Steelers to move back. You have the Bills back there. I'm sure the Commanders have been in talks of trading back into the first round. And they have a couple second round picks that I'm sure the Steelers would be very, very intrigued by. If I remember correctly, I talked about it yesterday that I think they have 36 and 40. Um, so early second round picks, starting from 33, obviously. If you have the 36 pick plus the picks that the Steelers have already, that seems enticing. But again, ideally you would want a first round pick. And I'm just still skeptical of teams like Green Bay, Philly, the Bills, Really most of the Bills, just because of Brandon Bean, it's in his nature almost to just trade up and try to find value up and just moving around the draft, maneuvering himself to find the best value, try to get more picks and stuff like that. But you have to think now that with how the Bills have set up and how this team offensively is lacking a little bit of talent and wide receiver depth, they're going to have to feel move to make a deal to get up there to make sure they get their guy because the Steelers in all honestly could take a wide receiver it wouldn't surprise me but they really do most of their work with wide receivers in the second round so again skeptical on that the Steelers as well as the Rams that I'm going to get into later on are in the weird spots where teams are looking at them they could trade up but then again if the Steelers are too open to trading those other teams look around and think, why are they so open to trading? They're not going to take the player that I'm thinking of. Let's just keep them there and not really move. But again, you have to see how the field plays out, how all these draft picks line up, because you could have a big run at offensive linemen. There's always a big run in the first in the first round with a certain position. I'm thinking offensive line just because it is the deepest group, and I think teams will start to panic a little bit if they see one, two, three, maybe four go before they pick around 18 into the 20s and into a couple picks in the 30s. That'll get some people moving. That'll get some people picking up the phone, calling other teams to try and make a deal up to trade, maybe from the second round even as well. That's always something that I think a lot of people don't talk about, trading into the first round from the second. And ESPN's Field Yates, ESPN's Matt Miller have also touched on this topic. Matt Miller said that 
um, Washington potentially trading with Seattle would be enough to trade them their 36th overall pick and their 40th for their 16th for their offensive line, trying to rebuild it as they have. They've added Nick Allegretti. They've added Tyler Biotish. He's looking at the commanders to try and trade up. But then again, Seattle might be too expensive at 16, which is why I think the Steelers are in the prime position to be that pick, to be that team to pick up the phone, call the commanders, and if it doesn't work out with the Seahawks, offer it up and see what you can work out with them. Now with Field Yates, he also reported that he's hearing that the Bills are the most likely trade candidate from what he's heard from all his sources with Brandon Bean and how he usually trades up in the first round anyway. He did it last year with Dalton Kincaid. I'm sure that he wouldn't be shy about doing it again. So those really are the biggest kind of stories following this segment idea with the Steelers trading back. Because in all honesty, I just think the senses around the Steelers right now is that none of their top players on their board will be there at 20. I think right now, if you see someone like Terion Arnold, Quinion Mitchell there at 20, potentially just not being taken, not being drafted by any of these other teams, it's all funny how it all falls because if they're there, the Steelers are not going to entertain anything and they're going to draft one of them most likely. There hasn't been a lot of talk around offensive line too much or center. Defensive back is an interesting one, like I mentioned there. Wide receiver as well. Second round is usually where it all happens for the Steelers. And the real just idea to leave this segment off on and just kind of close it out is this idea of Omar Khan now bringing in this more aggressive mindset. A few years ago, you wouldn't really see the Steelers do this other than the time they traded up for Devin Bush. Now I think Omar Khan, their new general manager, has brought in this more aggressive mindset, a lot more open to exploring trades, seeing what other teams are out there, have in store for them. And if they like it and if it's good for their football team, they won't have any problem pulling the trigger. It's good for the Steelers in that way to keep their options open. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised if they stay there and draft someone that is just not on anybody's board. That's just how the draft works out and how all the surprises it has in store for everyone. We're going to have to wait and see what the Steelers end up doing, but that's another pick to just not sleep on, not lose focus on, because the Steelers are one of those teams that I'm sure the Bills or someone in the later rounds are going to want to call to try and work something out and move up in the first round. Meanwhile, we're going to move on with the show. There's a lot more to talk about on today's episode. I mentioned the Rams picking the first round for the first time in a long time. We're going to talk about C.D. Lamb and his contract situation with the Cowboys, breaking that all down in finer details. And after the break, I'm going to go into my top five players, coaches, or teams under the most pressure to perform in 2024. So stick around, a lot more coming on today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. (laughs) 